Hi, I'm Madina, a data scientist at the site, and in the previous video we went over the Wi-Fi based indoor localization. Now we're going to move on to the programming tasks. You can access this code using the GitHub link provided in the description box for this video. We start with the first notebook and begin with part 1. This part is focused on loading and preparing our dataset. The dataset path variable holds the location of the data. The dataset consists of three splits train, validation, and test. Each split contains several CSV files, and here are the paths to each of the splits. Now, I'm going to load the first trajectory in the train set. There are 223 columns in total, which is true for any CSV file in the train or validation set. Note, there is no header with column names in any of the CSV files, so we define the names ourselves. The first 120 columns represent the access points from which the sensor data was received. The last three are the ground truth values of the X, Y, Z locations of the reference points. There are only five rows shown because I called the head method of the pandas library. Let me load the last five rows of that CSV file and you can see that in the first trajectory there are 85 reference points or checkpoints in total. Now let's read the first CSV file coming from the test set. It contains only 220 columns that hold the feature values. There are no columns containing the ground truth values on the locations where the features were collected. It is common to pre-process the data before it's fed to a machine learning model. In our case, we're going to aggregate all of the trajectories that belong to the same split into a single matrix. For each of the splits, all of the feature values will go to a feature matrix, and all of the ground truth values will go to a target matrix. This brings us to the first two programming tasks. In task one, we're going to process the data coming only from the test set, where no target values are present. Before we go into the specifics, let's take a look at the file structure of the test set. There are 18 CSV files in total, each representing a trajectory. The names of the files indicate the order in which the trajectories were collected. For example, 1.csv is the very first recording taken for the test set, 2.csv is the second, and 18.csv is the last one. So in the first programming task, please go through each of these CSV files one by one and aggregate all of the features into a single matrix. Keep in mind to preserve the temporal information not only within a file, but also within a split. Let's go back to the Jupyter Notebook, to the prompt of the first task, which says, write a function called buildfits that constructs only a feature matrix. The function takes only one parameter, a string containing the path to the data split. The function should return a feature matrix of type NumPy array. The second task is essentially the same, but it is used to process either a train or a validation set. This function called build fits targets should return a tuple consisting of a feature matrix and the matrix containing the target values. For both tasks, we provide you with a few tests to verify the type of the return items and the dimensions of the matrices. This concludes part one. The next part is focused on predicting a user coordinates using random forest regression. Random forest is a supervised learning algorithm which can be utilized for both classification and regression problems. It combines multiple decision trees that train on various subsets of given data. The trees are run independently from each other and in parallel. In our case, the output of the random forest is the mean of the value predictions. Today we will use the second learn implementation of random forest regressor and the exhaustive search over a set of parameters to find the best predictor for our task. Note that we also use the second learns five-fold cross-validation on the trained set. The best model is chosen based on the mean square error rate, and we can further evaluate its performance using the mean error distance metric. It is computed as the average sum of all distances between a reference position and its predicted value. This brings us to the third programming task. Write a function that takes two parameters, the targets and the predictions, and returns the mean error distance. Remember that we will held the target values for the test set, so you can verify your estimator using the validation set. Feel free to experiment with the parameters. Now let's move on to the next notebook. This notebook is focused on solving the same task but using a simple neural network. We ask you to copy and paste your implementations of the three functions from the first notebook. Then we go through additional pre-processing steps that are common in deep learning. 
To achieve better convergence, we first need to normalize the data and then subtract the mean before it's fed to a model. We provide you with a simple feedforward neural network for a multi-layer perceptron. You can tune the parameters, extend the network, or even modify the model as you see fit in order to find the best predictor. Feel free to experiment with the provided code or come up with a different approach. We are actually quite interested in the mean error rate of your best estimator. The best score we got so far on the test set is 1.44. If you want to check the solutions for the three function implementations, or see how well you did on the test set, email us.